Welcome to International Irish Coffee Day. How's it going? I'm Barry Chander. You're very welcome to our Irish coffee demonstration, history and contest tonight. Looking forward to sharing a few recipes with you. Irish coffee, the route to market for more Irish whiskey than any other cocktail in the world. So looking forward to sharing some Irish coffees with you tonight. Let us know where you are. What are you drinking? Are you making an Irish coffee tonight? Have you had an Irish coffee? Is it too late for you? Are you making a decaffeinated Irish coffee? Let me know. I would love to know what you're uh, what you're drinking. We're going to taste, uh, we're going to make three different Irish coffees this evening. We're going to talk about the history of the Irish coffee. We're going to talk about how it has spread around the world, sharing its origin and where it is celebrated the most around the globe today. We'll make three Irish coffees and then it's over to you to tell us how you're going to make the best Irish coffee for 2023 to crown the Stories and Sips Irish Coffee of the Year. So uh, let us know where you are, where you're joining us from, what you're drinking, if there's something in your glass. Uh, great news uh, for all of us that there is. It's a school night. I know it's a what? Wednesday night? Tomorrow's Thursday. Yeah. You know, all, all my days mixed up. But we're going to talk uh, about the most famous Irish whiskey cocktail ever created the Irish coffee tonight has been great excitement around the world people making all kinds of Irish coffees good bad and awful uh, today sharing their pictures online and the the effort is all that counts isn't it we, we have a particular snobbishness towards the Irish coffee in Ireland and we'll talk a little bit about that hi right, to Johnny and Stacey and Steve Cody how you doing and Kevin and Lauren how are you all how are you getting on we're going to try and get fancy tonight with our uh with our technology and I'll pause the music here because we've got our very fancy coffee cam this is uh this is the secret to our success this is going to take us to hollywood i'm seeing uh, you know all the talk of the oscars there now in the last day or two every every second person in ireland was nominated for an oscar i think we should get something for cinematography for this this is very fancy altogether a uh, very expensive setup that involves uh dialing in from my iphone as well as having my regular camera and uh, hoping that all the cables do what they're supposed to do. This is the coffee cam. So as I'm talking to you straight on, you'll see what I'm doing with my hands. I'll make the coffees down here so you get a good close-up view. It's very, very fancy. Very fancy. At no extra cost like to you. This is all included in the price of your ticket today of $0. So uh, thanks, Stacey, for reminding us to uh, click the like button on your way in. Let us know that you're here, that you like what you're seeing, and more people get a chance to see our videos as we put them out there. Uh, we just crossed about, two, I think, 2,000 subscribers on YouTube as well, which is great. We've only recently started using YouTube again over the last few months. And if you hit the subscribe button, you'll be notified whenever we intend to go live, whenever we upload a new video, and it helps more people see our videos. So please click the like and subscribe button. That's all we ask of you. So what we're going to do tonight is we're going to make three Irish whiskey, Irish whiskey, Irish coffees um, tonight. Uh, two of them contain Irish whiskey and one doesn't. And I'll talk a little bit about that in a second. Um, if you are following along, making some Irish coffees with us, great. If you're not, uh, we are recording this. So this is available on our YouTube channel. As soon as we finish tonight, it'll be available for replay so you can watch back anytime. We put our recipes up on the screen and uh, they'll be available to you to pause later on to watch at your own leisure. And if you um, want to make these another day on the weekend or maybe when it's not seven o'clock at night, uh, then by all means do so. For those of you joining in Ireland, it's midnight, of course, and uh, best time of all to be cracking into an Irish coffee. I don't know whether it's late for Wednesday or it's early for Thursday. It doesn't matter. We'll have one anyway. We'll have a few of them. Lauren says three of them ready today, so she's sticking to watching for now. Fair play. <laughs> uh, Lauren has a, a contribution to tonight's uh, proceedings with a, a suggestion on one of our Irish coffees, which we'll talk about in a second as well. So that's the coffee cam anyway that you've all got a good look at. Uh, you'll be seeing all the proceedings taking place down here. Whenever the, a dirty spoon is thrown down, you'll be the first to see the dirty spoon, which is really, um, I can imagine, like a bit of a thrill, you know. Uh, so we'll take off our coffee cam there for the moment. And what we'll do is we will upload our slides. So fancy. It's almost like I'm prepared today. All right. I shared quite a few ingredients 
online there last week and sent them out in our newsletter. Uh, you'd be surprised, maybe you were surprised just how many ingredients there were that we're going to use tonight. But there's a reason for it. And uh, you'll, you'll, you'll see them as we get going. So tonight I'm going to talk about, if you've just joined us, I'm going to talk about the Irish coffee. It's International Irish Coffee Day. Look, let's be honest. Uh, Puerto Rico has the Pina Colada. Venice has the Bellini. Ireland has the Irish coffee. Nobody can take it away from us. In fact, even more localized than Ireland, Limerick has the Irish coffee. We're going to talk about the origin of that. Um, let me take this logo off the screen. And then we're good to go. All right, so you can see everything. So we'll give you a little demonstration of the Irish coffees in a second. But before we do that, we want to talk a little bit about the history. These are the three Irish coffees I will be making tonight. I'll make a classic Irish coffee. Uh, I'll make the cold diato, which uh, is something that I kind of made up on the spot. And uh, we'll make a Belfast coffee. So we'll have the original, the 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 the, the best by uh, many metrics, but we'll have twists on the Irish coffee as well. So you can choose how you want to interpret it and uh, play around with different ingredients. As well as that, uh, I'd love to hear how you make Irish coffees. What have you found to work best? The ingredients that you, you've you used, the ingredients that have not worked. Uh, tell us your process. Tell us how, uh, yeah, how you've created the Irish coffees that have kind of won over your friends and family or your customers if you're in, if you're in the bar. At the end of tonight, we'll talk about how to enter our contest to win a bottle of Powers Single Pot Still. Maybe it's a Powers John's Lane. Maybe it's a Powers Three Swallow. Depending on where you live, we'll see what we can get you. Uh, the winner of our contest will talk. Will will win a will win a bottle of Powers uh, Single Pot Still whiskey. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about that in a second. How to enter our contest? But before we make our three Irish coffees, I want to establish the truth behind the Irish coffee because there are myths, lots of myths. Uh, uh, to do with the Irish coffee that we must, of course, dispel lest uh, somebody steal the thunder uh, from the wrong place and somebody claim that maybe they're the originator, they're the inventor of the Irish coffee when, in fact, it came from somewhere else. So we'll crack on. The home of the Irish coffee is not San Francisco. It's not Dublin. It's not Shannon Airport. It's Foynes in County Limerick. Limerick doesn't give us very much in the... Uh, in in the kind of uh, the line of inventions, but it does give us the Irish coffee because it's here in Foynes in 1943 that the Irish coffee is first created. So Foynes is uh, uh, just south of the River Shannon in County Limerick. Uh, the Foynes uh, and Shannon estuary there stretches out into the Atlantic Ocean. Back in the 1940s, it was a busy seaport. It was a busy uh, sea uh, air air um, uh, boat plane. Um, plane boats, boat planes, uh, airport as well, uh, seaplanes. And it was also a very uh, busy stopover point for flights that were going from mainland Europe to the United States and vice versa. The reason being that back in the 1940s, 1950s, all the way up to the 1980s, 1990s, and a little bit later, um, the airport in Foynes and later Shannon Airport were a required stopover for flights flying over Irish airspace. It started originally because the uh, fuel capacity of planes wouldn't have allowed them to make the long journey from New York to Rome or New York to Madrid. And so they had to refuel along the way. Shannon and Foynes Airport were the perfect uh, halfway point or a little bit further for those transatlantic flights. So there was a lot of business was built up in the 1940s, 50s, 60s from transatlantic traffic. 1943 is the story is where our story begins. Uh, at the time, there was a lot of uh, development taking place in the Foynes Airport and in the Shannon region. There was a very famous man by the name of Brendan O'Regan. And Brendan O'Regan was this entrepreneur who was appointed the head of catering at the Foynes Airport. And Brendan O'Regan was a really entrepreneurial man. He uh, went on not just to overhaul the restaurant and the catering of Foynes, but when Shannon Airport was built a few years later, uh, Brendan O'Regan introduced the world's first duty-free shop. So anytime you go to an airport today and you see a duty-free shop, you can thank Brendan O'Regan. He was the Irishman from County Clare who was the first ever to suggest this idea of a zone within airports that was duty-free uh, to allow for uh, lower cost purchasing of perfumes and whiskies and, and, and chocolates and what have you. Uh, Brendan O'Regan also established the Shannon College of Hotel Management. He was pivotal in the peace process in Northern Ireland. Uh, he did a lot of work uh, with trade and creating a kind of a, a duty-free zone in the Shannon region as well. But in 1943, he was the head of catering and he was expanding the restaurant operation and he put an ad in the paper for a head chef. And he got this note, received this note, very simple note, just one line written on it that said, Dear sir, I'm the man for the job. Signed, Joe Sheridan. 
And Brendan O'Regan was very impressed by this, uh, uh, the, the brevity of the application. And he immediately called upon Joe Sheridan to come and interview. And Joe Sheridan was a man uh, born in County Tyrone in Northern Ireland. He had been working in Dublin and he made the trek across the country, which would have been no small trek back in the 1940s. And in 1943, early 1943, he started working um, for, uh, for Brendan O'Regan in Foynes as the head chef. Now, the winter, cold winter that same year, a plane famously took off from Foynes, bound for New York, a couple of hours into the journey. Uh, it, weather was very bad, very cold, very stormy, and the pilots decided it was time to turn back for safety reasons. So they sent Morse code back to the airport, and they said, we've got some cold, tired Americans on board. Is there any chance we could have something ready for them when they return? And Joe Sheridan was asked to make something warm for them. So when the passengers deplaned, came into the, into the restaurant in Foynes Airport, Joe Sheridan had nice warm mugs of coffee for them. And uh, sneakily there, he thought, well, they're a bit cold. Uh, with a bit of divilment, maybe he poured a drop of whiskey into each of them as well. And he handed them all out to the passengers. And famously, one man asked, is this Brazilian coffee? And he said, no, it's Irish coffee. And they were all warmed up. They went on their way the next day. But uh, about a week later, he went into Brendan O'Regan's office and he, he was still uh, thinking about this coffee he had made his pass the passengers of the, de of the that had returned on the plane. And he decided to enhance his offering a little bit. And he got a stemmed glass and he put the coffee into the stemmed glass and he put some cream on the top of it. And he brought it into Brendan Regan and he said, look at the, the, the eye appeal of this coffee. And uh, Brendan Regan said, geez, that's beautiful. So it became the official welcoming drink of Foynes. A few years later, they moved to Shannon Airport, where a new airport has been built across the river in County Clare, across the Shannon, and it became the official welcoming drink in Shannon as well. 1943, it was, it was first created, and I think 1945, 1946, they moved over to Shannon. In 1951, there was a famous journalist, an American journalist by the name of Stanton Delaplane. He was writing these famous letters from Europe that were being published in the San Francisco Chronicle. And he would write these notes back, uh, kind of almost like postcards from Rome or postcards from London or postcards from, from Dublin. Famously, he transited through Shannon Airport in 1951. He had this Irish coffee and was blown away by it. Happened to be talking to a friend of his in San Francisco by the name of Jack Coupler. Jack Coupler owned the Buena Vista Cafe in San Francisco. And he told him about this, this Irish coffee. And Jack Upper said, well, we need to recreate it. And they tried, they tried, they tried everything to recreate it. Whatever way they tried to make it, they couldn't get the cream to float on the top. So famously, they went back to Shannon and Jack Coupler and Stanton Delaplane asked Joe Sheridan if he'd teach them how to make the Irish coffee. And he said, no, I won't. But why don't you bring me over to San Francisco and I'll make it there for you. And they did. They hired Joe Sheridan, brought him to San Francisco. And from 1952 until his death in 1962, uh, he was in the United States. Now, we don't know where he was throughout all those 10 years. We know that he spent the first year or so in the Buena Vista Cafe. Um, but where he went after that, uh, we, we're we not too sure. He's buried in Oakland Cemetery, not far from uh, downtown San Francisco. He died in 1962. But the Buena Vista, because Joe and his skills at making Irish coffees, uh, because he brought those to the United States, the Buena Vista really capitalized on it. And in many people's hearts and minds, the Buena Vista is the home of the Irish coffee. It's certainly the home of the Irish coffee in the United States. They serve about 2,000 Irish coffees a day in the Buena Vista. They make their Irish coffees with Tullamore Dew. They were the first uh, bar in the United States to use Tullamore Dew. They, um, they have used various whiskies through the years from Tullamore Dew to Cooley uh, to, um, they may have used Powers for a, a short period of time, but now they're back to using Tullamore Dew again. The original Irish coffee would have been made with powers. And that has been confirmed by the folks in Foynes, which is a museum now, the Flying Boat Museum in Foynes. Uh, and if we think about that time period, 1942, 1943, there was no such thing as a blended powers whiskey. So we were thinking, so we're thinking really it's a it's a single pot still with whiskey, which in my mind, the closest thing we would have to it today might be something like Powers Three Swallow, maybe even the Powers John's Lane. Uh, as, as this pot still whiskey uh, that was served on the night. So the Buena Vista today, many of you, I think, have been to the Buena Vista. We did a great event with the Buena Vista a couple of years back where we live streamed um, uh, on, on, actually, it was just, just during COVID, actually, uh, with, the, with, uh, uh, with John, one of the, the bartenders from the Buena Vista, talking about just the volume they go through. Now, you've seen how they do it. Like, they horse out the, the drinks in there. Um, they make them 20 at a time. It's a messy, sticky 
it's a bit of, it's a bit of a show and you'll pay 16 or 18 dollars for the privilege of a small little small little drink and god i'd say there's more whiskey and coffee on the floor than there is in the glasses but it's a bit of an institution now in in, uh, in san francisco at this stage and something i suppose you have to do on a cold day when the when that fog comes in in san francisco go in there for now irish coffee um, today, uh, Joe Sheridan is is kind of uh, honoured in this very nondescript, ugly bar in Shannon Airport. God love the poor man. Uh, they could have done something nicer for the man. But uh, in, in Shannon Airport, you've got this, uh, yeah, uh, very sparse, bare bar called the Sheridan Bar, which, uh, you know, Dublin Airport and Shannon Airport are the only two direct destinations in Ireland if you want to fly from the United States. Uh, Shannon Airport doesn't get as much nearly, I mean, a, a fraction of the traffic that Dublin Airport gets, and maybe that's why they don't really invest a whole lot in it but you can go and have an irish coffee there i'd say it's probably nicer in the uh buena vista honestly uh foins uh, does still honor joe sheridan and the creation of the irish coffee at the foins flying boat and irish coffee museum there's a combination it's funny because I, I remember years ago driving in ohio up near steubenville ohio if any of you know northeast ohio on the way to pittsburgh and there are you know, America's famous for roadside attractions and, and unusual museums and, you know, like the big ball of string or the big basket, the, the Longa Burger basket in Ohio. But there is a sign I remember seeing for the Clark Gable and Cole Museum. Imagine that, Clark Gable and Cole, two things combined. Uh, Foynes has the flying boats and Irish coffees. How about that? You can go there. You can learn the history of the flying boats. You can learn about the Irish coffee. And they have a, a section dedicated to to joe there uh tullamore dew like i said uh, they are the pouring brand of uh whiskey at the buena vista the buena vista cafe is the large is the single biggest outlet or the single biggest account for irish whiskey in the world they go through two thousand minimum of two thousand irish coffees a day and if you think you're going to get probably 30 irish coffees out or 30 whiskey 30 irish coffees out of a bottle maybe uh maybe a few more that's 70 odd bottles a day of Tullamore Dew they're going through at least 70 bottles. That's what, six cases, five cases, six cases uh, of, of six cases of whiskey a day uh, in, in uh, the Buena Vista, which is a remarkable amount. There's a, a, a great picture there of the first shipment of Tullamore Dew that arrived for the Buena Vista in 1952. Interestingly enough, uh, within two years, the Tullamore Dew distillery was, was shut down, was mothballed, the gates were locked. It wasn't to, to the gates to Tullamore Dew as a, to the Tullamore Distillery weren't to open again until 2000 and uh, was it 2014 when the new Tullamore Distillery was bought. Uh, but Tullamore went on to be produced uh, variously in the Johns Lane Distillery in Dublin and then eventually in Middleton Distillery. But uh, they weren't to know uh, the fate of the Irish whiskey industry ahead when they were celebrating the uh, the, the, the receipt of these uh, shipments, these pallets coming in. That's a great picture, isn't it? Give every man his due. Uh, Bushmills is the pouring whiskey at the Dead Rabbit. Uh, some of you were surprised when we told the story last year that the Dead Rabbit doesn't use the Dead Rabbit whiskey. They use Bushmills. They use uh, Bushmills Original in their Irish coffee making. Another competitor for uh, large volume of Irish coffees sold. They have a very different way of making Irish coffees in the Dead Rabbit. It's more about consistency than it is about theatre. I think that the two coasts, California, San Francisco and New York, doing it very different ways uh, Dead Rabbit have a very thought through process that's all about consistency in the sense that if you get a Irish coffee there on a Tuesday morning at 10 o'clock and you go back there Friday night at 2 o'clock in the morning, you can have exactly the same Irish coffee because of they sous vide their, their coffee, they, they batch, uh, make their cream, they keep it in, in, a, in a, a certain temperature to maintain. They've got their whiskey and their and their coffee um, kind of already already blended together. It's not the theater of Buena Vista, but it gives you the same great Irish coffee every time. I like the Bushmills, uh, I like the Bushmills Irish coffee. Uh, Powers Gold Label was the Powers, or was the whiskey growing up in my house. So I always talk about how in Ireland growing up, you're one of three houses, most likely maybe four houses, a Powers house, a Jameson house, a Paddy house, or maybe a Bushmills house. We were a Powers house. So we had an old screw cap, of the Powers Gold Label. I, I remember it every Sunday, it would come out for the, uh, for the Irish coffees. And uh, I still I can still smell that that high pot still component of the uh, as a seven year old, you know, uh, of the, for, for the Irish coffees. So that's where we were. So I, my first recollection of of powers and of Irish coffees was like a Sunday afternoon. 
and it was the original. That's how they made it back in 1943. Right, that's the history. That's the uh, the background. Invented in Ireland, invented in Foynes in County Limerick. We sometimes hear the story, depending on the distillery that will tell you that maybe it was invented in Dublin. And Teeling, I think, have toyed with that story at times that it comes from Dublin. But listen, poor old Limerick hasn't got much. We have to, we have to leave them the Irish coffee. But I think it's a, it's a great story. It's the kind of story that a marketing agency would love to be able to come up with. But they might even think it's too crazy or too fanciful an idea. Uh, but I'd love to know exactly what happened to Joe Sheridan for the 10 years between 1952 and his death in 1962. I think we found out that he went to sea. He worked at sea. He worked on ships, uh, merchant navy, I think, uh, from out of California. And uh, one of the stories we heard that he died in a in a foreign, he died in, in, um, in the West, not the West Indies, but he died in maybe in Indonesia or somewhere like that. Uh, and uh, his body brought back to California for burial. So uh, that's a story I'd like to find out a little bit more about if anyone has any information. I think the Dead Rabbit, I think Sean Muldoon from the Dead Rabbit wrote the book recently, which I didn't, don't think got a whole lot of press about the story of the Irish coffee, which maybe has that in it. All right. Kristen says the Dead Rabbit will use Dead Rabbit if you request it. I'd say they'll use anything if you request it. All right. Shanae. Right. We're going to make some Irish coffees. Caroline says Clark Gable was born in Cadiz, Cadiz, Ohio. Okay, you can say that this is, Andrew loves when I say, when I pronounce certain Ohio place names, Cadiz, Cadiz, depending on where you're from, uh, Cadiz, Ohio. Johnny loves the Sheridan Bar. Great waiting there to be called for customs. Kristen uses powers for tradition's sake. Otherwise, you're supposed to use the unmentionable Tiger King whiskey. Ah, Kristen, don't you like your customers? Okay, so if you are making Irish coffees today, if you're going to make an Irish coffee tonight, uh, I want to know what you're making. I want you to take a picture of it, and I want you to post it to our Irish Whiskey Fans of America Facebook group. The reason is we're going to choose a winner. Uh, I'm not going to choose the winner. You're going to choose the winner. If you have an Irish coffee that you've made today, that you made last week, that you've got a great recipe for, and you, uh, you've got a list of ingredients, upload them to the Irish Whiskey Fans of America Facebook group. And on Sunday, I will gather all those posts and we will have a vote. And the group can vote on what they believe is their favorite Irish coffee. And the winner will get a bottle of Powers, either John's Lane or Powers 3 Swallow. We're gonna to start tonight by making the classic, the classic Irish coffee, the one I grew up with, the one we were taught to make in, in um, hotel management school, the one we were taught to make in the, every bar we worked in. This is the classic. The Irish coffee is a lot like the pint of Guinness in Ireland. We will judge it on its looks. We will be eviscerated if there's too many peaks or troughs in our cream. We will be eviscerated if their cream has mixed with the coffee. Uh, it's a bit like how seriously we take our pint. Oftentimes, you almost don't care how it tastes. It's almost like, yeah, but does it look the part? Very, We're very interested in how it looks. So we're going to try and make sure that our classic has the classic look. And the classic look doesn't get served with spoons or straws or anything to stir it. Uh, we don't put mint on top of it. We don't put uh, we don't put anything green near it, first of all. And uh, we we sometimes serve it on a little saucer with maybe a folded napkin if we're very fancy all together. We might grate something on top of it. Nutmeg, chocolate, crunchy bars, uh, if you're very fancy or have you notions. But we'll, we'll make ours a little bit classically tonight. So those are the ingredients. So we're gonna need our coffee cam, which we put up here. I feel like these are very easy. This one's very easy. Thanks for Stacy. Stacy there reminding everyone to click the like button. Very easy. Click the like button and the subscribe button. I'm going to put the kettle on for my um, my coffee. And I'm going to get my cream. And we're going to make our first one, the classic, right? Here's my here's my glass. Okay, bear with me. Here's our cream, Super Values Finest Fresh Cream. I think it's made by Avondale. Coffee is almost ready.
All right, and we have our coffee. So um, the the ingredients are very simple. It is sugar, whiskey, coffee, cream. That's it. All the main food groups, caffeine, alcohol, fat, sugar. What more do you want in a day? Um, I've traditionally shaken my cream, but we've got very fancy in the last few weeks. And we've got a little, a little frother that we've been using uh, to, uh, to froth the cream and actually whips it in a really nice way. Uh, and our shaker is 40 odd years old and there's more holes in it than a bit of Swiss cheese. So I'll be throwing cream all over, all over the kitchen. Uh, I'm going to pour a little bit of cream in here. Um, there's various ways you can make this in terms of the order which you put things into the um, into your glass. I'm going to heat my glass there for a second. Let me get the kettle. The warmer the glass, the longer it'll stay hot. Keep the spoon in there so that it doesn't crack when you drop in a cold spoon later. Bartenders will teach us that when you're building a cocktail, you start with the cheapest ingredient and you work your way up to the most expensive ingredient. So if something goes wrong when you're making it, you're throwing out the cheapest ingredients at any one time. Uh, so you don't start with the most expensive ingredient. So with that in mind, we might start with our sugar, then move up to our coffee, and then eventually put in our whiskey and we'll put our cream float on top. So we've got our glass here. That's, uh, that's nice and hot. Okay. So we'll throw out our water. Now, you can use sugar, different types of sugar. I have used uh, for tonight a Demerara sugar. Demerara sugar is light brown sugar. It is, the, the closest thing in America would be uh, Turbinado. Here, look, you can look at it there. Uh, Turbinado. This is kind of a lightly refined cane sugar. It is, it retains some of its color, some of the molasses color when it's refined, but it's not as heavy or as molasses tasting as something like... Uh, uh, what would be the, the equivalent in, in the United States? There'd be a much heavier one. Muscovado, maybe, uh, sugar. So this is a bit lighter. Now, I could use white sugar if I wanted, but brown sugar, there's a lovely, there's a, there's a, there's a little bit of a, a, the molasses taste lends itself very well to, to, to an Irish coffee. Irish coffee is about balance. I always tell people to choose the ingredient that they like the most and then balance everything around it. If you want it to be, if you're all about the sweetness, well, we'll have more sugar in it and we'll balance everything around it. If you're all about the whiskey, we'll balance everything around the whiskey. If you're all about the cream, we'll balance everything around the cream. But we're looking for a balance between the fat, the sugar, the whiskey, and the um, and the caffeine. Um, I have uh, opted to take this Demerara sugar and make a simple syrup. And the reason I've done that is because it's easier to uh, mix it with my drink consistently. So simple syrup is very simply one part sugar to one part water brought to the boil, cooled, and uh, here is my Demerara sugar syrup. I'll show you the color of it. So we'll put it down there next to the coffee can. That is the simple syrup. It's basically just one part water to one part sugar. I'll use about 15 milliliters of sugar uh, syrup, of Demerara sugar syrup for this particular uh, whiskey. So I'll start by putting that in. My glass is still nice and hot here, and I will take my syrup. Now, Again, this is to taste, right? Like you might like it sweeter, so you might want more simple syrup in yours. Now, next thing we'll put in there is our coffee. Put a spoon back in. Okay, now what kind of coffee do we use? The Again, it comes back to the idea of a balance. If you use something like an espresso or an Americano, I think you're gonna overpower your coffee. So something light, or something uh, medium blend, something that's not gonna take away from the thing you want to focus on. So if you wanna focus on the whiskey, if we're using a pot still whiskey, we've got more spice. If we're using a blended whiskey, we've got more sweetness, we've got more lightness. So you're looking for that blend. I'm for tonight's uh, classic using Powers 3 Swallow. Powers 3 Swallow, the most affordable pot still whiskey on the market. And I'm gonna use about 50 mils of this. Again, you might not need to measure it. It might just be to taste what you like the most. Now, make sure you can see it in the coffee can. Next up, we want to get our cream. Now, you don't want the cream to sink to the bottom. 
Sometimes if you're using granulated sugar, that's not dissolved. As it dissolves, it pulls down the cream, which you don't want to happen. So with my simple syrup in there, it's already mixed together. Already mixed together. Simple syrup has the benefit of mixing equally in cold and hot drinks at the same time. So let's take our fresh cream and we're going to whip it a little bit with the frother. Oh yeah, you're supposed to smile when you do this, otherwise it goes sour. Don't be freaked out by the smile. Now we don't want it too heavy or it'll sink to the bottom and we don't want it too light. Now if it's too heavy, there'll be all kind of uh, peaks and troughs in it and we'll get awful criticism, criticism online. If it's uh, too light, it'll just flow down to the bottom. Some people like to pour it over the back of a spoon, others don't bother. Okay, almost there, almost there. <laughs> Laurie, you should be in bed by now. Do you like my apron? I'm going to get you one, Laurie, for your, for your uh, Cork Whiskey Fest. We're going to get Laurie an apron. Maybe we get him a story and sips apron. He loves it. All right. This is going to almost be ready. So we wanted a consistency where it's pourable, but it's not too heavy. Not there yet. Almost there. Stacy in there with the pricing. A frother is 10 euros, $10 on Amazon in a wide variety of colors. Stacy is uh, is on affiliate uh, payments there from Amazon, I'd say. If this sinks now, be mortified. Mortified. I once entered a competition to make Irish coffees when I was working in Limerick, the home of Irish coffees. Can you imagine? I entered a competition uh, where the judge was Maureen O'Hara, the actress, and didn't I, didn't I sink my cream? Mortified. I was never asked back. So this one better not sink. All right, we're almost there. Let's say 10 more seconds, and I'm happy with it. Okay. This will do us. So it's a moment of truth. Everyone look away now. Get embarrassed. I'm going to pour it over the back of the spoon. And let's hope that it stays at the top. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. The damage on that is like a good Guinness. Now, I'm going to grate a small little bit of dark chocolate on top of it. A little bit of um, we're very fancy here tonight. Look at this and the, the old 78% cocoa. Beautiful, says Stacey. Laurie, share this into our WhatsApp group there. We'll get, we'll get some awards for this. All right, we're going to grate a little bit of, little bit of chocolate. Do, 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 do. I'll have to bring the, uh, the coffee cam up on top. There you go. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that dome. Look at the dome on that. People have won awards for less. Now, Sinead, that's the classic. Slaunch We'll take a sip of that. Mm. Mighty. Got a little lovely cream moustache now. So we drink it through the cream. Don't mix it. Don't stir it. Don't stick your finger in and stir it around. You want to drink it. The lovely texture of that cream. Beautiful dairy cream, Irish dairy cream. You're bringing the coffee through it. I'm spilling it all over the place here. An awful mess. Your ca coffee can be ruined. All right, Greg says I'm invited back. Lovely. All right. 20 years too late for my competition. But your look. Um, so we put that here now in front of the old... Uh, coffee cam so you can uh, take pictures and frame them maybe and stick them hang them up in your house do you remember that day barry made that amazing coffee we'll never forget it we call the kids into the room like to look at it you know that's the first one we're making tonight uh question should we put the cream in the freezer for a minute uh no i've never i've never done that i've never heard of that i just keep it at a refrigerated temperature and then i'll take it out and i'll either shake it you can shake it in um uh, like a, a juice shaker, a uh, cocktail shaker, or you could froth it like I've done here in a little in a little uh, little jug. But refrigerated temperature should just be fine. 
again, there's this kind of moment where you know it's gone too far, it's too heavy, and it'll sink, or it'll have kind of all these peaks and troughs and valleys, etc. But before that, you just there's a moment you know it, you can look at it, and the more you make, you'll 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 detect it, you'll get to it. Greg says we need stories and sips coffee glasses. All right, we'll get on to that. We'll get on that. I only make Irish coffees on days ending in Y, says Stacey. It's a fact. Right. Next up is an elaborate one. And you can blame Lauren McMullen for this. This is a, an elaborate one called the Cold Diato. And it's called the Cold Diato because it is a combination of, this is a kind of a mixture of a cold brew coffee and a caramel macchiato. So this now is poor Joe Sheridan is turning in his grave, uh, hearing the, the abuse the Irish coffee is getting in this one. But this one now takes it a little bit further. It kind of gets it cold, iced. It can be messy. It's okay. It's all about a kind of a bit of indulgence with this one now. Sweetness, caramel sauce. Look, we've got a caramel sauce that we must prepare first. Now, I didn't tell you about that, did I? Throwing that at you last minute. But I've been preparing this all afternoon, slaving over the cooker there behind me. I made the caramel sauce. So here's what's going to happen. We're going to line the inside of the glass with the caramel sauce. And inside the caramel sauce, oh, this is a boozy one now. Like there's whiskey in the caramel sauce, but then we'll come back and we'll add more whiskey into the glass after we've added the uh, the old sauce. So I started by taking 200 grams of butter, 400 milliliters of caramel syrup, 660 grams of uh, demerara sugar, 400 mils of condensed milk, five milliliters of vanilla essence, a teaspoon of ground ginger, and 200 milliliters of Blackbush PX. Blackbush PX and uh, decided we'll, we'll play around with that. Lauren reckoned Blackbush would be good. And I had, uh, I was out of regular Blackbush. We went straight for the PX. And uh, it's actually turned out really nice. So we made this caramel sauce first, melted the butter, stirred that all around, made sure everything was dissolved. Low heat. Once it was all dissolved, let it cool. Uh, and I've got it over here. Right. Now, this is a critical part. We should, put the, we should probably put the old uh, coffee can back up for this one. I need an assistant. Okay. So, um, let me see. Yeah. In here, we've got this caramel sauce, which I think you can see it here. So, for those of you who are looking up in the top, maybe we'll put the camera up here. Actually, this is what it looks like, okay? This is my caramel sauce made with butter, condensed milk, caramel sauce, ginger, 200 milliliters of, of um, Blackbush PX. Okay. So I have chilled a glass in the freezer for this one. You may look at this now and say, it's disgusting, like we're never making that. But uh, here's sure a bit of crack. Let me get my glass. So I have here a chilled Irish coffee glass. And what we're going to do is, this is a very simple one now. This won't take a whole lot of work at all because the hard work is done. Now you could, it takes about, I don't know, half an hour to melt down the butter and bring it up to a small little, 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 little boil and then, and then just cool it down. And I've left it there just kind of cool all afternoon. But you can make this later. Basically, I'm just going to pour some of the caramel sauce now, which is boozy already, around the insides of the glass. What's the yield on the recipe? This is, I think this uh, makes enough for about eight or nine, at least. No, maybe more. You probably make 12 out of this one, Greg. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to pour it just on the inside here. Okay. And I'm just going to roll it around to the inside a bit. So this will, there'll be no need to add additional sugar now to this one. Let's see if you can get this on the coffee can. So we're just rolling it around the inside. This will be messy, but it'll be lovely. Okay, and the chilled glass is already kind of having it stick to the side, right? Oh, look, it's good already. It's good already. So now we've got this boozy caramel sauce sticking to the side. Next, we're going to get cold brew coffee. You can make cold brew at home if you don't have it. Uh, if you don't buy, if you didn't buy it, how do you make cold brew coffee? You just steep coffee, uh, coarse ground coffee in uh, cold water overnight, twelve hours, twenty-four hours.
I made some yesterday, which I have here. Give it a bit of a stir. So now I'm going to add in some of my cold brew. Move this out of the way. Here's my caramel coated glass. I'm gonna pour some cold brew in here. Next, I'm gonna pour in another 35 milliliters of Blackbush PX because sure look, we're having the crack. And we have to get rid of the whiskey somehow. It won't drink itself, as I found out. We pour that in here. And we will top this up just like we did the last one with cream. We still got our cream over here. It's perfect. This can be messy if you like. This is sacrilege now to the purists. But this one can go straight in. It'll flow to the top automatically. There's enough sugar in there holding it up. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Look at this. Look, it looks terrible on the outside, but it's delicious. Look at that. All of that is on the inside. So now you have a cold diato. We're gonna put, instead of grating some chocolate, we're gonna actually put a small little bit of chocolate there resting on top. Drop it onto the cream. Boop. Look at this. Oh, there goes my cam. Here we go. Chocolate just disappearing. Look at it slipping below the surface. There she goes, like the Titanic, gone. That'll melt away in there as if there wasn't enough sugar in it already. And here you have the old cold diato. Look at that. Lovely. Mmm. It's like diabetes in a glass. If you like things sweeter than that, of course, you can add more sugar. But I'd say play around with it. At the very least, you'll have uh, you'll have all this great syrup, this caramel syrup, caramel sauce. You can pour that over ice cream. You can pour that over anything. And it's all boozy. I mean, this will set you up for the night. That's your cold diato. I'm going to trademark that. And I'd like a hat tip every time you make it. Cold brew, black bush, PX, and then the syrup, and then the cream floated on top in a chilled glass. Something different, isn't it? All right. People have tuned out. They're like, oh, God, no. This is, we've taken a turn. He's after jumping the shark. All right, we're going to move this. For our final coffee of the night, we are not going to go with whiskey at all. We're going to go with Puccine. Laurie's delighted now to hear Puccine being uh, fated for our last drink of the night. So I was up in Dublin last week at Bar 1661, where the Dead Rabbit came to do a pop-up. And uh, the first drink we had up there was a Belfast coffee which is a fantastic twist on the Irish coffee that Dave Mulligan, the founder of Bar 1661, came out with. And it is a very simply a cocktail with that you can think of in terms of three, two, one, three parts coffee, two parts putchine, and one part uh, sugar syrup, cream floated on top. It's as simple as that. And uh, we had a lovely uh, Belfast coffee in Bar 1661. 1661 is the home of Putchine, really, in Ireland, and it's called Bar 1661 because 1661 is famously the year that uh, Putchine making, whiskey making, um, was uh, was kind of was outlawed. Uh, Putchine making, kind of a home Putchine making, was outlawed in Ireland, and uh, that was all due to the difficulties in collecting the taxes uh, on that Putchine that was being made. So it drove it all underground. It didn't stop it being made. It just drove it underground into the hills and, and forests and woods and valleys and hollows and caves all around Ireland, especially up in Donegal and the in, in the peninsulas in the northwest of Ireland and Donegal. It, would be, it wouldn't be till uh, 1997 that Putchine became legal again fully in Ireland. Dave Mulligan has been flying the flag for, for a long time. His Putchine is born Putchine, and um, he is a fantastic evangelist for putching so this is a very simple drink and it's a twist on the irish coffee it's again we're using cold brew for for this one uh not not hot um coffee so i gotta make sure i've got my cold brew oh yeah it's over here so i have a these are glasses that they serve their um belfast coffees in are like that 
nice little delicate glasses. This is probably a little bit smaller than they would use. So this glass holds about 100 milliliters in total, about 110 milliliters. So my three, two, one uh, is going to be, uh, well, actually I have it here on the, on the old uh, screen, 45 mils of coffee, 30 mils of putine, and 15 mils of Demerara sugar syrup, pouring cream lightly whipped. Laurie's got putine as well. If you go to Laurie's house and he's got a, a, a bottle that says paddy on it, but what's inside is clear, you know well what he's got. Right, so we're going to make a Belfast coffee. So again, 45 mils of coffee. We start with our, with our um, maybe actually we'll start with our sugar syrup. So 15 mils of Demerara sugar syrup. We'll build it here on the coffee cam. Okay, sugar syrup goes in first. There it is. Next up, we're going to go with 30 mils of Puccine. I'm using the Addo Irish Puccine, which is a collaborative release between Blackwater Distillery and Killowan Distillery. It is a... Um, so what is Puccine? Well, Puccine is a distilled spirit. It uh, is an unaged spirit. It can rest in casks. It can't be matured. Uh, it uh, is typically colourless because of that. Uh, there are some that have a little bit of colour. But it is a distilled spirit made uh, traditionally before outlawing... Uh, with barley almost predominantly, but mixed mash bill is very common over the past few hundred years. Barley, oats, uh, fruits, apples, all kinds of things, uh, potatoes uh, variously. Uh, this is a mash bill that is 50% malted barley, 30% old Irish barley, 15% oats, and 5% peated malt. So a little bit of peat in this one. And uh, the, it was basically the uh, distillates from both uh, Blackwater and uh, Killowan were uh, made separately and they were then combined into one all island collaborative com uh, collaborative release. A dough meaning two, the Irish for two. So we're going to put in 30 mils of uh, this. Actually, no, we should, that's the expensive bit. We start with the coffee. Where's the coffee? It's over here. Oh, yeah. So 45 mils approximately of this. Cold brew. Uh, we can take another drop of that. In here, next up, we've got our putchine. About 30 mils of that. Okay. And then all we do is we float our cream on top. Move this out of the way so you can see everything. Cream looking good. Yeah, cream is looking good. Actually, do you know what now? It's gone a bit hard. So we'll put in a bit more here and we'll froth it just for a second. We can't fall at the last hurdle. We never live it down. Okay. We're looking good. No, that's still, that's not thick enough. Oh yeah, I'm a smile. <laughs> So again, we're just floating this on top and, and you can grate some nutmeg on top. In, in 1661, they grate some nutmeg. There we go. That is looking good to me. Over the back of a spoon. Boom. Belfast coffee. Eleven we'll L sip. Slauncher. Mm. The putching shines through it, but it's softened by the coffee and softened by the sugar. This heroes the putching. It absolutely heroes it. It puts it front and center, and it's a lovely balance. I mean, oats, creamy oats, little hint of uh, peat, that sugar, coffee, that's a winner. Belfast coffee is an absolute winner. Serve it in a lovely little dainty glass like that, and you'll be winning friends and vanquishing enemies all day long with a, with a beauty like that. Absolutely beautiful. Laurie's favorite cocktail. It's a lovely drop. 
They'll use Bond Puccine if you get it in 1661, but you can make your own with any Puccine, any good quality Puccine. Mikkel, Boyluck, Ado, Black, uh, Cologne's Puccine, Panger. There'll be no sleeping tonight now with all the coffee I'm drinking. Jeff says, we've already got our airfare to Ireland for the whiskey bus. Worst case, we chase the bus around in a rental car. Everyone's a winner, so, you know, um, we almost can officially announce that our our whiskey bus is going to be centered around one massive day, which is a day at Middleton Distillery. And we've just um, more or less finalized an amazing schedule uh, at Middleton on one of the days for the whiskey bus, which is basically nine in the morning till five in the evening, a full day at Middleton doing things that are not available to the public. It's going to be a cracking day, an absolutely amazing day. Speaking of the whiskey bus there, we'll talk more about that during the week. But uh, Middleton is going to be the highlight, just like Bushmills was the, one of the highlights for us last year. Middleton will be the highlight this year. A lot of competition down there, a lot of competitiveness down there in Middleton. Kevin O'Gorman determined to beat Bushmills. Uh, so it's going to be a great day. So there, those are our three coffees, our three Irish coffees. You, you're far more creative than I am. I saw peated Bill Phil Irish coffees being put up into our group earlier. Uh, we also saw some people playing around with uh, rum finished bush mill, the rum cask bush mills as well, the Caribbean rum cask. So there's a lot of things you can do in a lot of places you can go with Irish coffees. The classic is the, is the starting point. You can go in any direction from there. And every distillery, every brand has their own kind of version, their own variation on it. I just think you have to perfect the classic first before you move on to anything else. The, um, the contest that we're running is for 2023 Irish coffee of the year. The stories and sips Irish coffee of the year. We want to find out who has the best Irish coffee. You're going to vote for it. I'm not. You're going to do all the hard work. Here it is. Upload a photo, the ingredients and the recipe to Irish Whiskey Fans of America Facebook group. Uh, and on Sunday, I'll take all the entries and we will vote on them as a group on the favourite. And the winner will get a bottle of power, a single pot still. Um, I'm trying to, I'll try and get you a bottle of power as John's Lane. It's just really hard to find it in the United States. That's shippable. But we'll figure it out. We'll definitely get you a bottle of pot still powers one way or the other. All right. Um, what do we think? Bit of crack? Poured over pancakes, says Jeff. Kristen talking about my milk moustache there, yeah. <laughs> There's so much history with Irish whiskey, isn't there? I mean, and then, you know, you, you branch into the likes of the cocktails, like Irish coffees, and just going back to 1943, it's now 2023, so 80 years of history and stories and adventures from San Francisco to New York to Foynes and Shannon and wherever Joe Sheridan went and wherever the poor crater ended up, he didn't live a very long life anyway. He died young, uh, uh, sadly, but hopefully his last 10 years, which were spent in the United States and, and away from, from Ireland, were, were fruitful for him. And he had uh, he, he got perhaps the just, just, the just recognition for his contribution to Irish whiskey, which probably would have taken years and years for people to realise just how much of a contribution that, that was. It is the most sold Irish whiskey cocktail on planet Earth. There is no other cocktail, including Irish whiskey, sold more than Irish coffees. So Joe did us all a favor uh, in the industry in creating this. And uh, and we toast Joe uh, and and Stanton Delaplane and Jack Coupler and Dave Mulligan and Jack McGarry and everyone who's carried forward the kind of the idea of the of the Irish coffee, however they've interpreted it, because it's a fine drink. All the food groups, remember? Right, we're now going to retire the coffee cam. The coffee cam is going to be put back in its box for another year. We'll put out the remains of what we have left here of our various coffees. We didn't do too badly. We got three good coffees there. We got our Coldiato slash diabetes. We got our Belfast coffee. And we got our classic. Can't lose. I wish it wasn't uh, one o'clock in the morning. All right, neck all three of them. I'm on the road tomorrow heading up uh, to Belfast and to Killowan Distillery and to um, a friend at hand and McConnell's future distillery, the Crumlin Road Jail. So we'll have lots to share with you on our lock-in 
slash Shabin on Sunday night. We will uh, share with you the inside tour of the Crumlin Road Jail. So the first time that the Crumlin Road Jail has been shown on camera in kind of tour form. Um, John and Sarah and the team are going to tour us around and uh, we'll record it all and we'll share it here on Sunday night in the Shabin. And uh, we'll get some interviews and learn more about McConnell's plans for the future. And you may even hear about the next McConnell's whiskey that's about to be released as well. We'll have details on that as well once we have them to share. Uh, Saturday, we'll be bottling our next whiskey, our club whiskey. Taking off the coffee cam there now. The um, We'll be bottling our Shorecross whiskey on Saturday. The great news is the labels uh, are already printed. Surprisingly, they, they got printed super fast. We thought it would take another week. So they're printed. They arrive at the distillery tomorrow. On Saturday, I'm going to help bottle and I'm going to help label. And that way, we'll be able to get those bottles down to cork and hopefully have them available within the next 10 days for ordering. That is our peated single malt. I'm very excited by it. 66% ABV. It's a cracking whiskey. Um, and there's no harm in sharing with you now that the first people who are going to taste that uh, will be our Whiskey Club members who are at the Dead Rabbit on February 6th, because one of the six whiskeys on the night is the peated single malt from Shortcross. And it's a historic whiskey, and we wanted to include it because it's the first peated single malt to come out of Northern Ireland to be distilled, matured, and released from Northern Ireland in more than 75 years. And so it has a special place in the history of Irish whiskey. So for those of you who are traveling to New York, we look forward to seeing you there, the Dead Rabbit, on February 6th. And on February 7th, we're going to have a great catch up at the Copper Still in Chelsea, where we're going to drink whiskeys, beers, and hang out all night until the um, until it's time to milk the cows the next day. And we have some great guests and uh, whiskey personalities joining us in New York. Ger Garland, the brand ambassador for uh, Irish distillers and Middleton will be joining us in the Dead Rabbit, which is amazing because we've got some great Middleton whiskeys that you're going to be tasting on the night. And uh, we've got uh, traveling on her holidays, but there who will be joining us on the 7th as well is Lauren McMullen from Bush Mills. And uh, she's not working, but she's enjoying herself. So she'll be at the tastings as well. And um, you'll get to meet people from the World of Irish Whiskey, Tim um, from Lost Irish. Uh, lots of folks will be will be around New York for the celebration of the Dead Rabbit. We're celebrating 10 years of the Dead Rabbit and 700 years of Irish Whiskey history on February 6th. And uh, we've got a great program of events for you. Okay, uh, what else? All right. Um, I think I've got all your questions. We will share more about the Whiskey Bus as soon as we can, as soon as we have more details. Uh, and yeah, uh, I will see some of you tomorrow in Belfast, I know. And I'll see uh, some of you on Saturday in Redemon Estate. David, I think, is here. And I'll, um, yeah, we'll share everything with you on Sunday night. So uh, seven o'clock Sunday night, uh, tune in for the Shabin and we will stream the we will stream the video. I'll put together some video montage of the tour and then we get to talk about it. I think it's a nice way for us to share the videos. We're also going to have a chat. Once we get back from New York, we'll have a chat with Eric Ryan, who is the who is the face really of Powers Irish Whiskey at, at the moment and a great historical uh, man for, for whiskey, runs the Cork Whiskey Walk. He's a distiller in Middleton, has been there for many years. Uh, he has an oracle of knowledge on, on Powers. He is going to talk with us about Powers Rye, which launches in the United States in the next 10 days. Uh, we'll get official details on that on Tuesday, so we'll share the press release with you. It's an amazing, uh, amazing story of how this came about using rye that was grown in Wexford, uh, not far from the home of Powers in Oily Gate in Wexford. And uh, it's a column distilled whiskey, 100% rye mash. So we'll share all the details of that with you. And then we'll have some videos chatting with Eric about the story of it. And also the history of the Johns Lane Distillery used a column still uh, in addition to their pot stills back in the 1960s. In the early 1960s, they were using a column still, uh, which would have created, uh, produced grain whiskey that was eventually used in Bow Street as well. And probably even uh, in the early days of the new Middleton Distillery. Lots coming up and uh, we're working on a quarterly, uh, a quarterly tasting kit uh, and we're working on a way to elevate the kit from the middle of the year onwards, having an amazing stories and sips box 
and uh, ways to get these to you in a really efficient way. So lots of things kind of happening in the background there. So thank you all for your membership of the Stories and Slips Whiskey Club. If you're not a member, we'd love you to join. It's $20 a month, and we give you access to hopefully as many as eight whiskeys this year. You'll get access to our quarterly tasting kits, all of our online events, and you get your first in line for any events we hold, like at the Dead Rabbit, etc. And um, yeah, it's a it's a model that I think we're, we're all enjoying at the moment. So thank you all there for the support. Okay, what else have we got? More comments. Three Irish coffees can form a triangle. Listen, if you want to sing the old triangle, you're all welcome to. I I had a I had a call today with a with Jer Garland from Irish Distillers to talk about New York, and he messaged me last night and he said will I have to sing the old triangle? And I just replied very simply, um, uh, never expected, but always encouraged. And I think that's uh, that should be our motto for the old triangle. So maybe we'll get a song out of him in New York. Who knows? He won't be on our Tuesday event in New York because he's going down to Naples, Florida for a Method of Madness um, event down there. But for those of you in New York on the Monday, you'll see him in the Dead Rabbit. Kristen says, thanks, Barry. This is the best whiskey club in the whole wide world. That's because of you and everyone else that's part of it, Kristen. Thanks a million. More stories and tips. Swag, says Stacey. Yeah, we'll work on that. We, were, we are definitely working on that. We're working on that. Okay. Shine, that's it, folks. Uh, this recording will be available on our YouTube channel as soon as we finish here. If you want to go back and watch the replay, get the recipes, or learn how to make the diabetes in a glass, you can do that. Uh, I will be going to bed so I can get on the road early in the morning and go to the up north. And I'll talk to you all on Sunday night, and I'll share some news from McConnell's Whiskey with you over the next uh, 18 or 24 hours too. Sláinte.